you were entering the championship round. It was a big week for the corporate side of MMA. The UFC announces the revamping of the Hall of Fame and also released a pay tier for fighters in the new Reebok deal. Plus, we discussed a fight night main event between Stephen Miocic and Mark Cutt and asked the question, when is enough is enough? Also, Chelsea Sonnen headed to pro wrestling. To Afro, my maybe, maybe radio. This is Five Round MMA. <laughs> Hello there and welcome. My name is Alex Ramirez. Alongside me, my co-host, Guillermo Sita and Albert Sita. This is Five Round MMA. Before we get started, today's fine show is brought to you by our fine line of sponsors. First with, uh, first with Five Rounds Clothing Line. Awesome clothes for the fighter and fight fan. Uh, rocking Green Eco-Friendly Cleaner Products and Redemption Martial Arts to RMA Foundation. So gentlemen, how are you guys doing? Good. I just want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. Uh, today is Mother's Day. Mother's Day. You... Uh, have a wife and a mother of two children. Anything special? Uh, breakfast in bed. I know she wanted some shoes, so I'm thinking <laughs> I'm going to pick her up some shoes. Yeah. So so she gets some, some, shoes. Shoes. Yeah. Yeah, some shoes. I got flowers, too. So, I mean, like, it's just something she really wanted was a new pair of shoes. So oh, There you go. Albert, I, it's yours as... <laughs> well, uh, I, I don't have a... I have a significant other, but she is not with kids so you guys are what about you guys' <laughs> mama hello oh what but my mama? mama you guys are, bro- you guys yeah, are brothers well yeah i was gonna say for my mom I, yeah i didn't want to steal my idea but i was gonna do a money tree oh i already got her something so joke's on you <laughs> oh, i got no. him the i got him these custom made uh walking shoes because uh <laughs> you know uh she always complains that shoes aren't comfortable these days so i found some some company that does custom made older woman shoes that make <laughs> oh. it comfortable you know <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool, yeah. I, I, uh, me and my family surprised my mom with a little uh, lit dinner last night, so it was kind of cool. A little pre avoid the crowd, so that was kind of fun. Um, and I'm I'm all about celebrating a, a little bit earlier because uh, I don't like they the crowds. Beat the crowd. <laughs> so uh, who did have fun on Saturday night was uh, Stephen Miocic. He said so in a tweet. He just said that was fun. <laughs> he, he quit, it was quit, fun, almost killing them. He's of course talking about his main event bout between uh, him and Mark Hunt in uh, Australia, which uh, ended in the fifth round after four rounds of uh, Stipe grinding and pounding, avoiding Mark Hunt's big punches, and just uh, I think he landed a total of three hundred and sixty-one total strikes landed, which is a new record in the UFC. Uh, completely dismantling Mark Hunt, who, uh, if you guys go to Mark Hunt's Instagram, released a picture of himself, just horrible. Mm-hmm. Like, I think he's in the hospital. Just completely, completely just battered. So, uh, gentlemen, just a reaction to the thought of Stipe Miocic coming, bouncing back from a win. Okay, I'm really upset. Why? I mean, I'm a big Stipe Miocic fan. This win should have solidified himself for the next title shot against Cain Velasquez and, well, the winner of Cain Velasquez versus okay. uh, Verdicio Verdum. Uh, I felt that he beat JDS. And uh, uh, okay. I think with that win and then a win over Mark Hunt would have easily gave him a title shot now. It's kind of uh, wait and see. Yeah, I don't think the UFC announced anything. Well, I mean, because it's all shot, I don't think Dana White was there. So they didn't really announce like, who was next yeah. in line. But I think, uh, I mean, Albert, if, uh, any of the other weights, who do you really think that is um, in well, line? I mean, see, if, yeah, that, that's, that's the hard part because I don't know where to go with Stifen, to tell you the truth. Like, what? I know I would want him to get a title shot, but. The way the heavyweight title shot is, it's almost like once, twice a year. Mm, so do you have him wait almost long? I mean, because uh, Cain Velasquez and Verdum are barely about a fight. In June. Yeah. And Couple then months, by the time months we get away, to the next away. fight, I don't know if, if Siphon will be able to be on the shelf that long. And Junior Dos Santos isn't going to shut up about it is either. He fighting, he's fighting Alistair Overeem. Rumored. I think they're rumored, they're rumored. smack talking so, back yeah. and forth. So. And so Junior Dos Santos isn't... isn't Going to just say, like, okay, take my number one contender, supposedly, since yeah. he has it. So, right now, it, it's just a weird spectrum. But you had Todd Duffy. So, Todd Duffy versus Siphon, it makes sense to me. No, I thought Duffy's going to oh, Frank Mir. Oh, Frank Mir. Yeah. He finally got him. I yeah. forgot. Uh, but there, there's a, it just, it's a weird division yeah. right I, now. I just so. think uh, whoever comes out champion out of uh, Verdum and Cain Velasquez will actually dictate yeah. the, who gets the next title shot. Because if Cain wins... I think Stipich will get that that matchup. Exactly get that fresh and if blood. Doom wins. I think JDS gets that that matchup, and then you still have Kane versus Stipich, maybe a, a you know number one contender fight. That sounds pretty good, actually. Those, <laughs> that, that, those, that, those four right there. But again, it all depends on what Kane and who knows what if Kane Velasquez and Verdum is even close, yeah. and then and that might have a rematch. What Alistar Overeem does too. So yeah, because you might say I think he's in the yeah. mix as well. Yeah, but what do you what? Let's say hypothetically the the bout between Verdum and Kane is a pretty close one. Wouldn't Verdum want a rematch in Brazil? Kind of fair. Kane. 
got his in got his Mexico. In, yep. Can I get a rematch in Brazil type of thing? So it, it just depends if it's close. If it's yeah. not, you know, I don't think. But of course, you don't think it's gonna be close, right? Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be close. <laughs> <laughs> I just hope they just introduce some more heavyweights because it's starting to get very thin now. Yeah, I think uh, who made the splash this week was Bellator. They signed uh, uh, two heavyweights. Yeah. One uh, out of Brazil, like a former kickboxer, kind of an iffy record. I think it's like three and zero, but like. Yeah, you know? and but the one who was some from Black Zillions, I think uh, he was like a 26 year old undefeated or like three losses, about nine knockouts. So they're kind of making a splash in the heavyweight division, mm-hmm. kind of adding to the depth of it. So, I mean, it was last time we heard about the UFC signing a, 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 pros- a heavyweight? heavyweight prospect. Oh, so not anytime soon. Not since they uh, absorbed Strike Force, right? Yeah. So uh, I want to go back to the harp to the main event, which um, kind of. A uh, question I thought, because in between the fourth and fifth rounds, the cage side doctor asked Mark Hunt, because he's getting a pretty bad beating, hey, are you okay to um, continue? You know, can you sure you continue fine? Mark Hunt said, oh, yeah, I'm fine. Good. But, like, and then obviously, like, the three-minute mark, uh, Milch was able to finish the fight. Uh, so was that unnecessary damage inflicted on Mark Hunt? Should the doctor have known better? Like, okay, this is Mark Hunt. Obviously, he's not going to say no. The guy's a true warrior. I mean, well, so, I, I mean, you, what's, the, what's like I said, what is enough enough in MMA? Well, I'm going to go back to Quebec League Soccer. Uh, you're, if you ever ask the athlete, they're never going to flat out admit, hey, you yeah. know why I can't go. I mean, like, unless it's really, really, really bad. But you want to be out there for the most important games. I mean, like, you know, I've had pulled hamstring in the middle of the game, and it's like, oh, can you go? It's like, I'm going to I'm gonna go. If you're going to ask me, I'm going to go. If you actually have medical treatment, they're going to be examining it. Hey, th- you can possibly do more damage. We uh, advise you to, you know, not continue. Yeah. Then that changes everything. And I think uh, you see it in the NFL. I mean, like, they have the whole concussion protocol before yeah. they even let them back into the game. But if you ask the, the – and now let's go back to a little bit of MMA. MMA. If you ask Mark Hunt, he's not going to say, hey, <laughs> you know what? I, I, you know, I can't go. I lost to the stack of He's yeah. not going to accept that. He's going to go out there and still try to, you know – uh, at least try to win, especially heavyweight division. You're gonna have yeah. you know slug slugfest, or you know one one punch can knock out. Yeah, that's the other what guy. he, he feels So I mean, way. like if, if you're gonna ask me, I'm still gonna try, especially if I can go go out there. So yeah, I think there has to be a little bit of different protocol just to protect the the fighters a yeah. little bit. Albert, do what you think? Uh, I think this is where the corner should take responsibility. The, the corner isn't just they're just to train the fighter. I think it's also their call to not just strategize during the fight. But also to know when your fighter is done. Yeah. And I think uh, a lot of corners haven't been stepping up yeah. to this responsibility because I feel they, they all have that responsibility. And if you look at some of the boxing fights, when the when the when the referee does go to the corner and says, "Hey, if you don't defend yourself or if you don't start fighting a little bit more, I'm gonna stop the fight." The the first chance I get, and usually it's the corner that tells the fighter, "Hey, we're only gonna give you one more round. Yeah. You go out there and, and show you know, something." I, I, I don't I don't like what Albert's saying because I mean, like the corner too is gonna be like, "Hey." You know, out of respect. But uh, that's part of the responsibility, too. You I, as a corner totally, man totally should know, this, like, you yeah. know what? My fighter, you've seen him train day in, day out. You know what, what he can do, what can he do. You should be the one to be like, you know what? He reaches well, limit. And, and, he bests him. Yeah. And we don't need to see any more. Well, don't, don't, doesn't, like, the fighters pick who's in the corner, right? Yeah. So, I mean, okay, but, but I, I'm going to trust you, like, okay, to know when, my best interest, right? Yeah. yeah and and also, I mean, Mark keep, keep in mind, of... these, these guys are taking some headshots. Yeah, sure, you're asking them questions, but I'm pretty sure they're <laughs> yeah, sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, they're not... They're and, having the best judgment okay, then sometimes. Okay, why did Machida go in for the second round against Luke Ruckel? He oh, shouldn't yeah. have went. They should have stopped him. After he was that that, that horrible recovery. I mean, Machida isn't known for his recovery time. He, he I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. The stool. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. But that was the corner's responsibility. Machida is a dragon. Dragons don't go out like that. <laughs> it's the corner's responsibility to say, look, listen. But I'm pretty Machida, sure they, they do the same thing as, hey, Machida, can you go? That's why you, that, that, and that's why you pay be like, yeah, I can no, go. And they, as a friend, I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm not if gonna... you as a spectator knows when, when the, a fighter has taken enough, and I mean, like, enough beating, you're like, well, okay, dude, that's done. Even fighters that I dislike, and I see them start taking a huge beating, I'm like, dude, just, you know, you got yeah. you to stop it. There's there's no way I, they can I, continue. I think the, the, the comp- competitive mentality is not like that, Albert. I think no, I, and, and day, that's why you shouldn't ask the fighter. But I think the corner should take some... The corner, t- the competitive I think they should, nature of... of so you'd rather have your not, guy, no, like, get I, brain damage no, up there? I, I don't, but at, at the end of the day... Who am I to call for him? You're the cornerman. That's your responsibility. <laughs> that's almost as saying as this. It's like saying, I'm telling you to throw this combo, but if I'm giving you the wrong information, you're going to get hurt out there. Yeah. So it should work the other way around too. It's a double-edged sword, I think. I mean, if I tell you to throw a 2-1, right, and the guy the guy already read your, your 2-1, 
it's my responsibility because I just told you what to do. And guess what? The other guy read it. So you kind of already put the blame on yourself. So in a way, no, you should take the I, responsibility. I totally agree that it should be responsibility of the corner. But I, I'm just telling you, as a competitive standpoint, it's never the, that's not the case. It's always left on to the person competing. I mean, I got it you too, uh, as well. When I played soccer, the coach would be like, hey, I see you limping out there. Are you still good to go? And then, as long as I said yes... He's gonna, you know, what? Yeah. I'm gonna, you know, or make, they could, I can trust but, your decision. I mean, that could machismo like, factor. Yeah, I agree. But it's because they could do something like Mark, like Mark Hunt. Look, with 30 more seconds in the next round. But if you don't show anything in those 30 seconds, I'm throwing the white towel. Yeah. So the fighter knows in the back and said, "Yeah, you want to stay in here? Well, then do something." Can they do that? Can they throw towel in the middle? I never seen. Yeah, that yeah well, you could technically you throw yeah. the white towel whenever. Oh, they, so <laughs> that means she's like, you know, you know like, you're not good. Like 30 seconds in the first, in the fifth round, yeah. you're done. Hey, Sylvester so Stallone hesitated. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, stick with Mark Hunt. <laughs> he should have threw it. What happened? See, <laughs> yeah, see what happened. You, you just brought up a good response. <laughs> if, if Rocky would have thrown in the towel, everybody. Apollo would still be here. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of Mark Hunt, uh, 41 years old. He's known more for it, being able to take these beatdowns, but at, at, in your 40s, is that something you want to be known for? No, I, I think so. kind of realistically, I mean, when you know people around Mark Hunt, you should tell them, hey, you know, I think it's time. 41 years old, and I mean, it's not just type of meal. Just look at the pre- previous. Like we're doing to him. Yeah, uh, with Junior Dos Santos, a spinning heel kick. I mean, it's yeah, it's in its head. Yeah. Especially in the so, head, to Mark Hunt, it's been in the head. So I, I mean, I, I think it's time to call it a career. Yeah, um, at first Marquette uh, had a, 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 a losing record. Yeah. And then when he finally started getting a winning record, you know, I was, I was kind of for it. He's back to being 10 and 10. Yeah. So I think that's, that, that tells you that. I, the last time I think he, he was still in an age where he could still kind of bounce back from that big lose, losing streak he had previously. Mm. But now I think, you know. I mean, uh, I still think you can be a lot of heavyweights. No, yeah, yeah, yeah but I mean, it, it's kind of on the top, the top tier, yeah, yeah the top tier. I, I, I don't, I don't see. I mean, I, I, I'll be down to see him fight Mark. Uh, what do you call it, Frank Mir? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you see Frank get Mark knocked out. That's why. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm down to see that fight. But as far as fighting these top tier ones, I mean, I, I think as far as the title picture, it's done. Yeah. Especially this one was the stamp on the, on the. Yeah, because he lost two contenders. I mean, Verdum. And he looked in good shape. And, and Mark and Mark Hunt actually looked in really good shape too yeah. for this fight. But, so. I mean, like you can, we can work out as much as you want, but when it yeah. comes down to reaction time, right? And yeah. just land. And, and keep that. in mind, he's been in through some wars too. People don't like. It's like the whole Noguera thing. He wasn't even really that old, but those vicious wars like add up to you. And he's been in vicious wars, and he got vicious head kicks and and, and punches. That it's to a point where it's like, dude. It's gonna catch up to yeah, you. Yeah, because we had a kickboxing career like long before he started in MMA. Yeah. So even though he was pretty dominant in kickboxing, he still takes some, you know, yeah. some blows to the head. So um, I think that is it for this first segment. Uh, stick around, guys. I want to talk about the UFC and kind of the the business side. Kind of uh, um, shed itself this week. It was kind of a slow week for fight news, but the Hall of Fame is revamping, and they also released the pay tier for the Reebok deal. So stick around, guys. <laughs> We are back. Thanks for sticking around. Before we start this next segment, I want to thank our fine line of sponsors, Five Rounds Clothing Line, uh, Rock and Green Eco-Friendly Cleaning Products, and the RMA Foundation, Foundation Redemption Martial Arts. So this week, the UFC announced that it's going to revamp its Hall of Fame credentials, qualifications in order to, you know, I guess to give it more prestige and legitimacy, right? Because it... I think prior to that, I'm not sure you might get you guys or you guys might know. Um, I think was it just kind of like Dana White picked uh, you're in the Hall of Fame this year. They do it every July uh-huh. for but the, the, the Fit Ex, the Fit Expo so, or the Fan Expo. So it's kind of like a, I think it was last year it was I think Charles Mass Lewis here before it was Stephen Bonner or Forrest Griffin. So it, it kind of got the feeling like, okay whoever Dana White is cool with that week gets to the Hall of Fame. Is that kind of right? Am I right? Is that my am I feeling towards that kind of right? That, yeah. That's how it felt like. Felt like yeah. So they announced that this week they're gonna have uh, revamp the whole qualifications with four wings. The Pioneer Wing, the Modern Era Wing, the Fight Wing, and the Contributors Wing. So the Pioneer Wing is for fighters who debuted prior to November 17, 2000, which was before the modern uh, unified MMA rules were in place. And obviously the Modern Fight Era Wing is fighters who, who debuted after that. Uh, fight Wing is pretty self-explanatory, but I guess the greatest fights in UFC or MMA history. And then Contributors Wing for anybody, you know, promoters, announcers, it says, um, trainers, and judges and commissioners. Is that kind of like a payoff or something? Not kind of like, oh, hey, you judge, uh, we get Hall of Fame. So the kind of the four, four, the four wings. So do you guys like this the idea that UFC trying to legitimize the Hall of Fame? I think it's a step in the right direction. I still don't think they have it correct. Um, and the reason I don't, I don't think they have it correct because I, I think I, now Dana White uh, has the opportunity 
people that he doesn't like mm. into the Hall of Fame that deserve to be there. Yeah. Tito Ortiz, Randy Couture. Well, um, according according to the UFC official website, this uh-huh. is according to the UFC official website. If you go to the Hall of Fame section, it has Mark Coleman, Randy Couture, Pat Militich, Royce Gracie, Matt Hughes, Tito Ortiz, Char- Charles Lewis from Tap Out, um, Ch- Chuck Liddell, Forrest Griffin, Dan Savern, Ken Shamrock, mm. and Stephen Bonner. Those guys are already in the Hall in, of Fame. In it, yeah. Okay. So now it kind of opens the door. But again, like, the biggest question was, who voting these guys in? Obviously- but keep in mind, Randy Couture was also buddy buddy with with Dana White before the whole fall. I think so even like Tito Ortiz. So, okay, so they're already in it. Yeah. So, but I, I think it's a step in the right direction, but uh I still A lot of questions, right? Yeah, a lot still, of questions like still a lot of questions. I mean what what why does one is is one class more special than another class? That's really what it comes down yeah. to. When I look at the MLB Hall of Fame or the NFL Hall of Fame or even the basketball hall of fame, which is a little bit more of college and NBA. Yeah. Uh Everybody's in the, this prestigious class, yeah. and it feels like what Dana White did is actually divide the classes. Either, yeah. and that, to me, either you're more special or you're, you know, yeah. not as special, but you carried the torch. Yeah. Well, for, when I first read this, I thought, okay, well, with all these four different wings, he's basically just covering his, all the bases they have now. Because you, uh, you read the yeah. list, right? So for the Pioneer era, that's the Royce Gracies. The Ken Shamrocks and Dan Severns, right? Those guys are covered. For the modern era, it's like, well, who's really in the Hall of Fame now? But he has Stephen Bonner and Forrest Griffin, both who debuted after 2000, right? Yeah. So and I guess, I, Mike, I guess Mike Hughes kind of... Yeah, I think he, he might have debuted in the borderline. But remember mm-hmm. when Stephen when Stephen Bonner got Hall of Fame? Like, Hall of Fame, this guy is, I yeah. think, 8-8 eight eight in the UFC. Never, never, won, never won a championship Never won a championship. Life. was more, more known for as a punching bag than anything yeah. else. But then, okay, we, well, let's add the fight wing... And obviously, Stephen Bonner and Forrest Griffin are, took part in the most important fight in UFC history. Yeah. They're tough and I. And the contributors wing, that covers Charles yeah, Lewis. So now he has a format, he has a follow now. So like all the bases are covered. Well, with contributors wing, look at Charles Mass Lewis in here. For the fight wing, that's why Stephen Bonner's in here. So it's kind of yeah, like... But even the fight wing, I mean, like, wouldn't you just... Uh kind of note the fight not instead of like the inducting fighters the, yeah they included in that fight true yeah. true i mean uh, if i think about it if people were and especially if you go to baseball if they don't have a certain amount of numbers yeah they're not gonna get in if they didn't play for a certain amount of years they're not gonna get in yeah and i feel like yeah because i'm Bob pretty sure example, that he was not gonna fit that i'm pretty sure there's yeah. baseball games that revolutionized, really good, yeah. that revolutionized the <laughs> really baseball <laughs> yeah that, that revolutionized the baseball sport but they're not gonna put those guys in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, you still have to have, to have the numbers. And even then, if you have the numbers, they they look at other stuff too, like character and stuff like that. Yeah. So well, I mean, if we want for baseball, I mean, you have the numbers, but the whole steroid era yeah. cloud, and a lot of guys aren't getting in, but they have the numbers, but the whole speculation behind them. So I mean, also if you're in the modern era, and what if you're like suspended for uh, PEDs? But e- even the NFL, TRT. if you look at the NFL and you look at some of those players that had like huge plays or whatever. They're not in the NFL Hall yeah, of Fame. And, and who, who was the greatest guy? catches. Or like the Music City Miracle. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't even remember the guy that, did, that, yeah. that ran it back. Or even like when uh, when uh, Eli Manning threw the, the touchdown yeah, to beat the Patriots. That one year. Like yeah, I don't know who that's receiver. That guy's so. not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we'll see. I mean, the it, UFC it, Hall of Fame. buddies, you know. Hey, you know, you, you did well to me. Yeah. So, you, <laughs> you deserve... Uh, me a little tap or to be remembered in history, pretty much. Yeah, what this I means. mean, because unless but I do agree, Mark Coleman needed to be in there. <laughs> <laughs> unless they come out and say, okay, this is like the writers are gonna, you know, this is like not in the UFC's hands whatsoever. And I don't know, I, they, I guess the UFC Hall of Fame, not the MMA Hall of Fame, because it's two different things, obviously. Because like yeah. guys like guys like Fedor would you know still be in it. I mean, a lot of guys from Japan who pioneered the, the Pride um, organization, they would more likely probably be in the Hall of Fame. But I mean, as of right now, this is the UFC yeah, Hall of see, Fame. I, so I don't like that either. I mean, that the. It, it's only the UFC uh, Hall, Hall of Fame. Fame it should be MMA, MMA Hall of Fame. Yeah. I mean, so. kind of like the... I mean, I hate to harp into it, but the other kind of Hall of Fame that's kind of shady is the WWE Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of basically who's on Vince McMahon's good mood this year. Then we'll get him to obviously look like a Macho Man wait until after he died. To get well, actually, in. now it's who Triple H looked up to. Yeah. Well, yeah basically, uh, <laughs> because it doesn't now. matter if Vince has beef with him or not. If Triple H looked up to you, yeah. then you're in the Hall of Fame. So now, I mean, so expect the... Uh, Macho, Macho Man's the only one I think the fans demanded it. Yeah. It had nothing to do with Vince wanting it. Uh, Triple, Triple H. H could say all he wants. He didn't want it. The people wanted it, and then it was going to happen. People got what they want, right? He still did a backhanded slap, but whatever, dude. <laughs> I know what you did out there, Hogan's. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see how this Hall of Fame pays out. I mean, they're going to announce this year's class... Uh, July with the, the, the UFC fan I feel like it's going to go to the WWE, uh, what's my call it, 
uh, it's gonna kind of resemble what they do. They're gonna run out of fighters to. Yeah, they, they inducted <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger got inducted to the Dirty Hall of Fame because he did a backhand and slap to Triple H. Get out of here, man. <laughs> Ronda Rousey will be there too. Yeah, so, uh, before she retires. Yeah, yeah. No. But so I understand that, Mr. T. But now on our social media. You're not a Pete Rose fan or what? Isn't Drew Carey the Hall of Fame too? Yeah. The celebrity, yeah, the celebrity week <laughs> they have there. So, so I think eventually they're going to run out instead of actually. I, I've seen it in NFL or MLB. There might be. Sometimes there's no nobody makes yeah. the, the Hall of Fame because the, they don't have the numbers to back it up. They don't have the support. From, or yeah. not, not the support, but the voting from the writers. And I think that's. Would make it even more le- legitimate. Yeah. Or sometimes there's like there's one guy who just makes it, or no, mm-hmm. yeah, one or two. Because don't get me wrong, Rikishi a good, was a good wrestler and everything, but <laughs> did he have a Hall of Fame career? <laughs> Let's really think about it. That's what I'm trying to say. And you didn't, didn't think about it. like Stephen Bonner had a good career. Yeah, he did special things, but is he a Hall of Fame fighter? No. Yeah. A hundred percent no. Mark Holman can at least make the argument that he had the title. Yeah. Uh, in two, I think he had the title on two different occasions at, at that. Ryan Couture had it in in, di- in different weight class. Classes. These guys have legit arguments. Seth Bonner, you can't tell me nothing, but oh, well, if it wasn't for that spike fight, there yeah. wouldn't be a UFC. Okay, yeah. but what what do you do as a fighter? What do you accomplish? Well, What's man, his accomplishment? Just, you're upset about that. Just wait till the next people get uh, into the Hall of Fame. I'll give you Matt Serra. I, yeah, sure if Matt Sarah, yeah, the, the, like, be, why would Matt, why would Matt yeah. Sarah go into the Hall uh, of Fame? Because that fight with GSP was one of the biggest fights of all time. So he's a so. one-time <laughs> champion. Well, that's just an example. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of names that Albert's not going to be happy with, but they're Dana White's boys. I'm just saying, but like, if anything, GSP should just go in it right now. Oh, oh I mean, the, the, the whole fight wing era, the whole fight wing of the Hall of Fame gives a pretty good chance that Diego Sanchez is going to be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. The Nightmare is going to be the Hall but, of Fame because the pro first. Uh, cast was going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, oh, they, they, I, yeah I think they said they were going to put the I whole first class. That they, that's, the that's the, the, the pioneer the contributors or modern era wing. Which one is it? <laughs> I, I think Diego fits into all three. Of them, to <laughs> yeah, be so yeah, really. So we'll see. Let's see how it plays out in the uh, long well, run. Back to Diego Santos yeah. before we move on. Uh, Gilbert Melendez fight. <laughs> oh uh, yeah, Gilbert Melendez. The, the you know Clay Guido one. <laughs> Clay Guido. <laughs> Let's one. not forget when about he, uh, when he fights Conor McGregor. That will be modern. And then when you take what he did for the ultimate cast. Yeah. You know, uh, what's going to call it? Pioneer. Technically, yeah. he won the Ultimate Fighter crown. Yeah. That's we, that's an accomplishment. He won the first Pioneer. one. So. Sam Bonner didn't win it. <laughs> so again, it's kind of a long play. Let's see if the UFC actually sticks these these you know these guidelines, and we'll go from there. But then, let's see. Um, all right. So the big other big news was that uh, the Reebok deal. It's going to be uh, enforced in July. You know, uh, the UFC signed an exclusive uh, sponsorship deal with Reebok. Fighters can no longer wear anything other than Reebok to the cage during the weigh-ins, post fight. No more no more banners anymore. That's the thing in the past. For the uh, UFC fighter, so and they can't off the the pay scale now for for fights. So they're at first it was going to be rankings, right? Well, they'll distribute the pay yeah, for rankings. but then because yeah. they're still working that out, because the rankings are horrible. I think, yeah. I, think, I, think, I think from what I see, if you go onto the comment section of the UFC's ranking system, people are just tearing it apart left and right. So I think nobody even takes it seriously. So now they announce this case is be uh, per By bite bites. per fight. Uh, so the pay scale, yeah. So the more you get paid, yeah. So fighters Except from, for the top tier, it's. Tell challenger and champion. yeah. Let's, let's go over that here. So fighters with That's one to, with one to five bout get twenty five hundred per fight. Fighters with six to ten bouts get five thousand per bite, per fight. Fighters with eleven to fifteen get ten thousand. Fighters sixteen to tw- with twenty sixteen to twenty bouts get fifteen thousand per fight. And fighters with twenty one or more bouts get twenty thousand per fight. Title challengers would get thirty thousand per fight. Title holders would get forty thousand per fight. So do you guys like this? No, whole, I'll tell no? you why. Okay, if I'm the national championship in wrestling. And I don't have no professional bouts on my belt, but I'm the gold Olympic national uh, Olympic wrestler with the gold medal. Yeah. I'm never going to go to the UFC. I'd rather go to Bellator and get more money that way than going to the UFC. Is it UFC belts and, or and, MMA in t- belts? In terms in of sponsorship. Yeah. In terms of sponsorship. It's UFC uh, belts, I think. UFC belts? I Dang, think so. Who has like 21 belts in the UFC? <laughs> there's, there's actually a great really? handful of people that have uh, wow. that much belts. Well, unless they, they count professional bouts, then, you know, but I'm talking about just sponsorship alone. Yeah. Why they would. Prefer going to like Bellator. So okay, so fighting. what about like, like like a big free agent like Eddie Alvarez? So I, I'm a big free agent. You guys are pursuing me to sign, but yet when I'm coming here, I'm only getting twenty five hundred dollars exactly. of sponsorship and money. I think that's why some people are already see, and they're, and they're saying the Strike Force fights don't count either. Don't count. So, so the if you if you're a Strike Force fighter that got uh, embedded by UC, your Strike Force fights don't count. So the yeah, WC, so if either, I'm a big right? free agent so or uh, no, that's where Gilmore's wrong. <laughs> okay, go. Because if I'm a national champion. 
I walk into UFC, I have two bouts, I, I destroy my two bouts. Guess what? I'm getting a title shot, and I'm a title challenger. I get 30 Gs off the bat on my third fight. Yeah, but you're going to go two fights or almost a full year just making 2500 No, no, not, ju- not just, a, not just. I still have whatever my purse is. Keep in mind, these purses I'm are... Ne- sh- they're, I'm sure those purses are co- No, they're all, they're all, yeah, and they're so, all negotiable. I mean, we've seen fighters that start off in like 40,000 range. You're like, whoa, this guy's 40,000 because he has the the, the, the the profession to back it up. Yeah. So it also depends on the negotiation. At the same time, we, uh, people are complaining about the, these sponsorship deals. You can't wear anything else, the, fi- the fight of the week and at the fight. No one says you can't sponsor stuff at, outside your competition. So if you're a good fighter, or whatever, you can still go and drink some Gatorade and and and, and sponsor that. It's kind just, of, yeah, well, just don't wear the lightning bolt during fight week and during the fight. So, well, so in, and, in that aspect, I have no problem because you look at the NFL, the NBA. Yeah, it's the same it, thing. It's the exact same thing. Exact the same only thing, difference yeah. is when you negotiate contracts, there's minimum payments. Yeah. I mean, like no one can, in the NBA. I think the 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 lowest you can get paid is like what like. Half a million. So I, I, I really don't know. Don't know. And, but but here, here's the other thing too. Uh, yeah, Reebok's a huge company, but it's not really a huge company. And I think this it's is just kinda, this. Uh, this is the first figures we're seeing. I think as uh, as more Reebok uh gets sold, and I think as maybe they get a higher a higher uh, uh income as far as Reebok, then I'm pretty sure the numbers are going to change and adjust to that. I think that's what people are afraid. And this is the first ever. Uh, sponsorship like that, so I'm pretty sure. Look, I'm pretty sure if you go into the NFL's history, the numbers don't aren't yeah. that impressive when but, it comes to I mean, sponsorship. Like, no, but they, they don't need to be <clears throat> because the contracts. Yeah. The contracts. I mean, just coming off from college to the NFL, how much are those guys getting paid? Five million dollars if they're in the yeah. first round. But that's also because it's the most popular, one of the most popular sports out yeah. there. I mean, no, I mean, but still, I mean, like uh, let's take for the NBA. I mean, like, those rookies are still getting. About if you're five, saying $5 fighters should get paid year. more in the UFC, I agree with you. But that, but that, that, <laughs> honestly, that is the, the overall problem not the sponsorship with Reebok because all the other sports do it the problem is the contracts if the contracts are at set at I minimum, think I think they say, should have it kind of like the NFL where they have some kind of signing bonus because in NFL it's not a, I mean we don't know if you're gonna suck we don't know if you're gonna get hurt same thing well, not guaranteed t- not guaranteed contract yeah and, the, and UFC is kind of the same way though because if but I if, fight, if I right? if I look horrible my first two fights but you're again, gonna drop me even though I sign a five Fight contract, yeah. but again, you're just and, and, and if the I get hurt, the deal, maybe yeah. they should do the contract. The contract. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think the Reebok deal. Well, we're talking about the Reebok deal. That's yeah. it. The Reebok deal. I, yeah, I think, think just, it's good. You think it's good? You like the Reebok deal? Uh, I I think it, it needs some tweaking, tweaking, tweaking here and there. And I, you but for the first, some, some for the, rumblings already for the first generation, but, I think. And I think uh, Brandon Schwab is, is kind of Schwab is kind of pushing. He said he made six figures in sponsorship and missed. And, and this is a guy that has said. That he would, he needs to keep on fighting to maintain his his family, whatever. If you're making six figures in fighting, right, and just sponsorship Life alone, style. dude, get out of here. And he says he makes the same with this podcast. Get out of here, bro. The lifestyle. Yeah, the lifestyle. Exactly. I don't believe it. No, well, I mean, overall, I you know, the Reebok deal, it just opens up more questions because that, it, the Reebok deal should not even be as such a big deal as it is because uh, you see sponsors change all the time. You go from. T- T-Mobile from NBA, all of a sudden they sprint. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's Metro PCS. Always, yeah, yeah sponsorships always change uh, in other. Yeah, I'm sports. pretty. I'm pretty sure Kim Lassen have his Metro PCS. <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, if the contracts aren't, I'm not like better, to. I see the Latino community have more Metro PCSs. I'm not saying it's I'm not saying a direct correlation you know, uh, because they came last. I'm just saying. I see a lot more Metro PCS in my neighborhoods, and I yeah, that's all I'm saying. I mean, Ever since I saw Kim Velasquez, <laughs> I see a lot more Latinos <laughs> with Metro PCS. <laughs> so we'll see how it plays out. Uh, one final bit of news before we go. We're kind of short on time here. Uh, the American gangster Chael Sonnen is finally fulfilling his destiny and headed to professional wrestling, guys. Yeah, global. It was announced he's, he's be the uh, uh, expert analysis, uh, expert analyst for uh, Global Force Wrestling, which is uh, uh, Jeff Jarrett's new venture. Jeff and Karen Jarrett. Ugh, Kurt Angle's still heartbroken over that one. Um, so what's your guys' thoughts on uh, uh, Chelsea I entering the world? I will be in Las world? Vegas. Well, I'm going to do my best to be in Las Vegas for the first taping ever. Ooh, I like maybe you road trip. You have to pay to watch it, though. It's okay. Oh, maybe I'm, I'm, sure. I'm sure it's not going to be that. I like that. Maybe, maybe a little it, road trip for it, that. It's in, in uh, the Orleans Casino, New Orleans yeah. 
you know? So it's coming up in July. So oh, wow. I, I, I would want to Maybe do that. Out. Maybe catch a little EDM concert, too. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, it, it's going to be. There's always EDM going on in Vegas. The first experience yesterday because you got, might get triple A wrestlers. You might yeah. get, you know. Bullet Club, son. That's all I'm <laughs> losing. I'm going, club, son. You get Japan. Kenny Omega. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Sell it. That guy needs to be. Look up all the things we said. Look him up. He needs to be in a Wheaties box. And look I think Chelsea, and, uh, back to Chelsea, and though I think Chelsea is a great name. Because people will tune in just for that. Yeah, see his uh, trash talking is extraordinary. Jeff Jarrett's so. smart. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'm excited have, about this. Maybe, I'm a wrestling fan. I'll give you this, Jeff. Yeah. We had this conversation we like, were, we were talking this before. Jeff, I hate your wrestling. I hate your gimmick. But, man, are you a smart business Good promoter, man. man. Yeah. So, you uh, are a good promoter, sir. <laughs> that's Take it. my hat out to you. That is it for us <laughs> today. I want to thank all, everybody for listening. Thank our final line of sponsors, Five Rounds, Codeland, Rocking Green, Eco-Friendly Cleaning Products, and the RMA Foundation, Redemption Martial Arts. Without them, this show would not be possible. And also, if you listen to us earlier Sportsnet, stick around. i got Snowman in the Morning, uh, the Flex Zone, a bunch of awesome podcasts, a great uh, sports network, so arenasportsnet.com. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at Five Round MMA. Follow us on Instagram at Five Round MMA. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Podomatic. Uh, check out Five Round MMA.com. What do you guys got? Uh, I just like to thank your producer, Guillermo Sita. I like to thank everybody for listening. That's it. Oh, yeah. The crime of the crime. Crime to get grimy.